Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and thank you guys so much for joining me on today's video because out of every video I've ever made on my channel, this is the most special one to me. As you can see, I am dressed up like Steve Irwin and oh crikey I am pale. But through this video, I am going to take y'all on a journey. Through my childhood of being a Steve Irwin fan and also through this insane Steve Irwin movie that I grew up religiously watching as a kid and I just really want to show you guys how Steve affected me. And by the end, I might even straight up become Steve Irwin. Who knows? This is a magnificent... But for those of you who are going to watch through this entire video and really go on the journey with me, I thank you guys so much. And I promise if you stick around, you're not going to regret it. But now it's time to begin. So let's head back to my childhood. <laughs> As a kid, Steve Irwin was my hero. I would wake up every morning and go downstairs and watch his TV show. I just, I loved it so much and it gave me such a love for animals. And I desperately wanted to become an animal catcher just like Steve Irwin. I even dressed as Steve Irwin on career day for school. <laughs> on career day at school, they're like, oh, so what do you major in? Steve Irwin. <laughs> now, of course, my teacher wasn't too happy that I also brought in a live cobra with the costume. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't exactly wrestle the snake till it's out of the cage, Mrs. Wilmington. <sighs> and it only bit like two kids. I wanted to be like Steve Irwin in every way. And I tried. I tried really hard, actually. Let me show you what I used to do. Okay, guys, so what I used to do as a kid as, is I would get on this couch right here and I'd pretend it was a my boat. And then I'd grab some rope and I'd ride this boat until I found an alligator. Conveniently, there's one right there. And see, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to attempt to capture this gator just like how I would do as a kid. So first, you know, you gotta, you gotta tempt him a little bit, you know? You gotta, you gotta, don't fall in. You gotta, you gotta he's, gonna, he's gonna come a little closer. He's gonna start, you might leap over the boat a little bit. You gotta, you gotta just prepare for that, okay? See what you do? Don't laugh at me. I'm gonna reach it, and I'm gonna grab him like this. And this is what I would do as a kid. I'd pull him back and forth. He'd be fighting me. No, 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 no. He doesn't win this fight. And then, okay, so he might have tangled up in my roof a little bit. I got him. And then I might have to jump into the water just a little bit. Okay. Then I'm gonna tie him. Make sure it's right around his neck. Good and tight. Then I gotta swim back up on my boat. Let's wrap up that jaw as he's fighting me. And see, this is what I would do as a kid. I'd make sure the fight went on a little while. Keep up that tension, you know? So then I'm gonna finally tie his neck good, clean, and tight. So there's no way he can get out. And then, okay, so it's, okay. So I'm not gonna knots, obviously, because this gator, he still fights. So, you know, luckily he's giving me a time to just chill and tie a knot. If I can get it. Hold on, just chill right there. I'm just gonna tie a little knot. Just gonna tie. Good, good alligator. Good boy. Good boy. There we go. Okay, there we go. I got him by the neck, okay? So now he's gonna be. Okay. <laughs> okay, that doesn't matter. This is all going to play. See, now once you got a tight, okay, once. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. The knot's not important, okay? So I got him, and I got my rope right here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that's around him, and then I haul him up, uh, haul him on my boat, and I pull him, hold him down, and then I got him, and then I got, got my little gator. And that's what I would do as a kid. I know, I'm extremely cool. So uh, now that I got him, and usually while I'd be doing this, my dad would be sitting in that chair right there. In that chair, he'd be sit look look at the chair. <laughs> he'd be sitting in that chair right there, and he'd just be silently judging me. Um, but I was like five, so I think it's fun. So now that I've caught, so now that I've caught this this wild gator right here, I'm gonna show you the next thing I used to do as a kid. Hold on one sec. Okay, so the other thing I would do is I would get my trusty little Steve Irwin action figure and I'd fill up my sink till it was completely full. Then I'd have Steve out on some sort of like boat or raft. Okay, so he's chilling, he's just vibing. And then that pesky old gator, oh, no, Steve! <laughs> this pesky gator is gonna enter the water right here. And this guy, he's real pesky, real pesky, great chip. He's gonna go like this, he's gonna circle. And then him and Steve would have some sort of ferocious battle in the water as they circle. And then eventually Steve's gonna leap off his boat, he's gonna jump in. And they're, they're wrestling, they're fighting, they're wrestling. And the water of the sink is probably splashing everywhere. And then eventually, he's gonna hoop. 
and he's got the Gaeta, and that's that's the job well done. And see, what I would do next, after Steve had won the battle, is quickly drain all of the water out of the sink before my mom comes back and gets mad at me for spilling water. Literally, literally everywhere. So, uh, let's get out of here quick before my mommy gets mad at me. Another really fun Steve Irwin memory I have is one time my mom came home, and she had bought this thing called a canine cannon, and it would shoot tennis balls out for your dog to go and fetch. Sounds cool, right? Yeah, well, we never used it for my dog. <laughs> See, what I would do instead is put my action figures in the canine cannon and shoot them through the air. It was awesome. But see, one time I loaded up the gun with my Steve Irwin action figure. And when I shot, it broke my Steve Irwin toy and the gun. But here, my friends, is the real kicker. The Steve Irwin toy had got decapitated and his head had jammed into the gun. So not only would the gun not work, when you looked down the barrel, all you would see is Steve Irwin's decapitated head lodged in the parts of the gun. That may be the funniest thing ever. Also, literally my earliest memory of being a kid comes from Steve Irwin. The memory is me as a kid going to a Build-A-Bear where I made this alligator wearing Steve Irwin's clothing. I've had this thing for well over a decade. It's still probably one of my most prized possessions. And once I got older, I got a pet turtle that of course I named Steve after Steve Harvey. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Obviously named after Steve Irwin, like uh, everything else in my childhood. <laughs> What's up, Steve? Steve, my man, my, my, well, n well not my man, my, my turtle. My turtle, Steve. And you know, nowadays everyone claims that Infinity War was the most ambitious crossover of all time. Not true. That was the Wiggles and Steve Irwin sing-along. Oh my gosh, I watched this VHS so many times because it's it freaking slapped. I don't remember us. Oh, I know, I do remember one of them. It was about the owl, right? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Steve Irwin Wiggles crossover music. Oh, oh, oh I found it, I found it. <laughs> I found it, I found the owl. Hold up, hold up. This is what I remember. Yes! type of bird. I have not heard this in years. Ooh, the amount of nostalgia that just brought. That was not planned. Um, well, but that, that just adds to the feel of the video. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, I rewatched the Wiggles and Steve Irwin crossover sing-along so many times. It, it slapped. <laughs> Do the owl. Ha! Steve Irwin inspired my child self so much just to love animals and have fun. And like we just talked about, he created some of my favorite childhood memories that I will never forget. Sorry about uh, decapitating you though. And something else I would do as a kid is rewatch Steve Irwin Collision Course on repeat. I loved this movie, but I have not seen it in years. But I think for this video, it's about time to revisit it. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this masterpiece. <laughs> this film with a space station exploding and then this government tech MacGuffin thing falls to earth and it's swallowed whole by an alligator. He swallowed that thing just about as fast as Loki's hand. <laughs> then we cut to Steve Irwin, my man, who's chasing a lizard and I just love the fact that he jumps and misses over and over and over and over and over and over and it just never gets old. It's still, it's still great. Close. And as a kid, I just remember watching this scene going like, Oh, so close, Steve. You'll get it next time. And look, I'll be honest, just from re-watching the first few scenes of this movie, it put a massive smile on my face. I just forgot how special this movie was to me. And I love that I'm finally revisiting it. Also, something I really respect about this film is the use of the real life environment. You can just tell that this movie is real. And they're not using special effects and green screens. This isn't the Avengers or a Derek Noss video. It's Mephisto! In this movie, they are really 
out in a desert or really on a river. There is no trickery on a soundstage. I'm not even joking. There's a few times in this movie where Steve Irwin has to look at the camera and say, hold on for a second. I got to get this gnat out of my eye. At one point, he even freaks out in pain because he gets bit by an ant in the middle of talking and they left that in there. Their food source to come in. Ow, crikey, the ant just bit me on the back. And it even helps add tension because if you establish the fact that the gnats and ants are real, it means later when we're dealing with a cobra, it means that's also real or, or a cobra as he says it. I have just never seen a movie with this level of real atmosphere before. And I love seeing Steve interact with it. Also, charisma and fun is just dripping off Steve Irwin in this movie. He is just so energetic just being himself. And this movie wisely never makes him act because... Why would he? He's got enough charm on his own. But unfortunately, Steve Irwin isn't in this entire movie. There's also a few side plots which aren't nearly as interesting. There are all these scenes of the government officials talking and I'm just like, where are the alligators? So in order to make these scenes more entertaining for y'all, I made my own edit. Enjoy. Thanks for coming in at such short notice. The down satellite collected sensitive photographic data. The equivalent of a million images worldwide are stored inside the hard drive of this black box mm -hmm. and the other side plot of this movie involves this girl named Rosie and she is on the hunt to kill this pesky alligator on her land yeah as a kid she uh, she definitely scared me a little bit she really could just be quite aggressive and when she would yell I would get under my blanket because it she was she she just she would she would yell loudly and scare scare a dilly she would she, she was scary now go on Nico! Like, you know my, uh, Scared Me As A Kid series that I do on this channel? I could probably do one on her, honestly. But yeah, her plot is not really that interesting either, and she's mainly just there to be a plot device, so I'm not really gonna mention her or the government stuff that much, because for me, it just drags the movie down. So now we cut back to Steve Irwin and his wife, who are out on a boat at night exploring this dark swamp. And once again, because the atmosphere has been established to be so real, it makes these scenes even more creepy. And this all leads to a scene that inspired me so much as a kid uh but looking but looking back probably not in a very safe way but steve spots the gator he leaps off the boat and wrestles the sucker in the water like and this scene is terrific i love the tight angles of them thrashing and seeing the one dim atmospheric light from atop the water and the way they mix the use of a fake and real gator is actually incredible like you could easily believe it's a real gator the entire time in fact Maybe it was. The only bad thing about this scene is how Steve puts his calm voiceover over the footage of them fighting and it kind of just ruins the tension a little bit. And I was just watching it going, hey, Steve, you know you're wrestling an alligator, right? This is what your voiceover should sound like. Bloody crap, I'm wrestling a freaking alligator. I'm rolling around in the freaking water and I'm wrestling an alligator. And he just bit on my bloody hand and I'm getting thrown around like a freaking ragdoll. Bloody, bloody frick, bloody, bloody, bloody frick. That's what I think it should have sounded like. But yeah, let's just say as a kid, I would reenact this scene a lot. <laughs> like a whole lot. <laughs> but eventually he wins the fight with the gator, like always. And then next we find ourselves dealing with a very venomous spider. And I love the editing of this scene. And it's really smooth the way they go from the close-ups to the wide shot. And I especially love hearing Steve's added, Woo! Woo Good haul. It's not completely understood why or how they build these holes. And it's pretty- ah! Ah! Just kidding. Jeez, Steve, you- you freaking scared me. <laughs> now, something negative I do have to say about this film is that before we hunt the main gator, we make several pit stops involving other animals, some I didn't even mention. And while a few of them have payoffs, some of them just feel random. And I totally understand that it captures the feeling of the Steve Irwin show, but sometimes it just feels like we're stalling the real story. But to be fair, if I had to choose between Steve uh, catching a few extra animals and more of the government and Rosie stuff, I, I, would, I would take Steve's stuff all day, twice on Sunday. Also, we get this scene of Rosie trying to kill that pesky alligator and she's so annoying and scary that by the time we get to her dangling over the water above the alligator, I was actually kind of on the alligator side. When this scene happened, I was like, oh, oh, poor guy. You got, you got a little gaty all tangled up in the blanket. Poor guy. But Rosie ends up calling Steve Irwin to come get that pesky gator. So Steve Irwin heads over there and begins his search. That means the crocodile has come up here just moments before I got here. 
He's probably sitting out there in a camouflage position. Oh! Ha! Joke's on you! I remember this movie so well that I remembered that jump scare and I barely even crapped my pants in your face. Also, I love how Steve says this line and then like five seconds later they contradict it. Finding him could take days, even weeks. Two seconds later. Oh! It's pretty funny. Now this action scene with the gator is so great because you can tell it's a real alligator that wants Steve Irwin to be his lunch. Or maybe it's just a really good actor in a costume who just happened to be really hungry on that day. I don't know. <laughs> maybe the alligator is played by Army Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Guess he's a cannibal. But I just love that they used a real wild alligator for the scene. And because it's a wild animal and it'll lunge out of nowhere, you get to watch Steve Irwin genuine surprised reactions when it happens. It's so exciting. And this leads to a great scene where Steve Irwin stands up on the front of a boat holding a rope, getting pulled by an alligator, and this amazing heroic music swells, and it has no right to actually be this awesome Yet, I have literal goosebumps. This boat's going flat out like a lizard drinking. We're in for the ride of our life. Also, the alligator pulls them down this creek, and there's a tree that has fallen over the creek, but luckily it's only like a foot high, so Steve Irwin just easily jumps over it. Oh, never mind. But this all leads to the big showdown between Steve and the alligator. And this whole action scene just feels like a proper set piece. But like at one part, Steve is wrapped around the gator and it starts to walk and it starts to try to get underneath the boat, which is slamming Steve's head into the boat. And I genuinely don't believe that was planned. Oh, breaking me neck. And it's stuff like that that gives this movie such an incredible raw and organic feeling. And as tense as that was, I genuinely don't believe it was planned. So it must have been even more stressful from the camera guy who was probably like, should we, should he, should, should we, should, should, no, just keep, just keep filming, okay. But after he wins the fight with this alligator, like always, the government dudes who are tracking this alligator because he ate that Tech MacGuffin thing, Eva Bobber Clobber, they've traced the signal now to Steve's car, so they go ahead and chase him. And then we get this big car chase action scene that really gave me a lot of Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of vibes, which, trust me, that is a compliment. And it also finds a cool way to give the snake they caught a payoff. Now, something that I really love about Steve Irwin is that no matter what he's doing, he will find a way to fall into some gosh darn water. It doesn't matter where he is, it doesn't matter what he's doing, he's gonna fall in some frickin' water. And I, and I respect, and I respect that. Steve Irwin could be stranded in the Sahara Desert and he'd still find a way to fall into water. It is really just an impressive skill to just be able to fall into water. Just anytime. <laughs> But now it is time to release the gator back into the wild. And this scene is genuinely pretty tense because you can tell the gator is actually really fighting back against Steve Irwin. The gator's like, no, 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 no. You think you're just going to put put your hands on my mouth and take off the tape? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I ain't, I ain't letting you do that. Yeah, I'm trying to take that tape off my mouth, I freaking dare. Yeah, 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 touch the tape again. <laughs> and trust me, Gator, I understand how annoying it is to have tape on your mouth. Looking at you, Detective Spielberg. And something else I love about the scene is how their dog, in the middle of it, just completely abandons them. And Steve Irwin's explanation is just so funny. Suey, go for the bank, mate. Suey can sense that it's safer for her on the riverbank. She knows that at any minute, this crocodile could get roll or head shake. Yeah, when we mess around with them gators, man, Susie just knows to get the frick out of here. But now we've made it to the big finale with a big boat chase and a glider thingy, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? As much as I praised Steve Irwin's acting in this movie, mainly because it's not really acting, there is one line that I think he delivers kind of poorly. That's it. I'm getting grumpy now. Steve is just like, Oh, you guys. Oh, man. You guys. Oh, my gosh. You guys are making me so grumpy right now, man. Oh, I just want to... Oh, man. Oh, I'm... Oh, I'm mad. Oh, I'm mad. I'm gonna I'm a get you guys. Oh, man. Oh, I'm pissed. Come on, Steve Irwin. You can't get grumpy. That's impossible. And then in this epic move, Steve Irwin crashes the hang glider using his boat. <laughs> You thought Marvel movies had cool action? Ha! But unfortunately, the movie is coming to an end. Gosh darn it. But we end the movie with Steve Irwin playing fetch with the government's tech MacGuffin, 
absolute savage. And it's really nice that as the movie wraps up, Steve Irwin gets to address the audience and talk right to the camera about animal protection. And it's just a really sweet message. And then we get to the credits where we get this absolute banger of a song. And no, it is not do the... But no, it's actually a different song, but I actually still remember most of the words to it, even though most of them are just... Nah! <laughs> Overall, I loved watching this movie again. Yeah, the government stuff kind of drags it down, but at the same time, it's never too much government stuff without Steve Irwin mixed in there. And I have not felt this much joy from watching a movie since I saw Playing With Fire in the theaters. Is it just nostalgia? A bit. But you know what? Even if it is a little bit of nostalgia, my happiness that I got from it, much like the Gators in this film, are 100% real. Steve's performance was so much fun. It's a better made movie than I thought it would be. And the action and score are surprisingly awesome. But you know what? After watching this film, I think it's finally time that I fulfill my dream and become Steve Irwin. I'm already in costume anyway. Think about it. This movie has taught me everything I need to know. And it's about time that that childhood fantasy I had so long ago becomes a reality. And now it is time for me to go out in the wild and experience what it's like being Steve Irwin. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you blokes. Today we're out here in the wild and we're gonna be searching us for ourselves a wild alligator And along the way we may even find some other creatures So let's just head out into the woods and see what happens. Come along with me Okay guys, we're out here in the wild looking for any sort of creature that I can get my hands on and show you guys So let's walk over this way. And oh my goodness gravy. That is a that is a Western European Eastern West Snake that is a snake right there. That is some that is a snake and see these things are very dangerous And I want you guys to just to, just to stay back But you've got to be very careful because any sort of movement at all and it will strike <sighs> Now you have to be very careful with these snakes these things are extremely deadly one bite and I'm dead now Do not try this at home. I am an expert snake charmer now. Just give me a moment of silence to do this right. Oh, the pain! Oh my God! Oh, good day, mate. And it is a good day, because look what we just found. This native Australian chameleon. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but all chameleons, they'll blend it into the surroundings, so that way predators can't see them. And if I hadn't had these good old eyes, I never would have seen him. Look how well he's blended into this jungle. It's really quite God's miracle. Now let's go look at some other animals. Shh. Okay guys, listen, keep it down. I just spotted a wild lizard out there and these things are super speedy. Take a look at this thing. Oh my goodness. It's an absolute beaut. It's a beautiful creature. Now listen, we're going to head out there, but you, these things are super speedy. So you've got to attack with the element of surprise. Ah, I got your bloody lizard! Oh, no, gee, I was this close! Oh, thank you. Ah, frickless cage, he got away. He was a speedy little sucker though, and we were this close. You know, you win some, you lose some. Let's look for our next creature. Oh, wow, wait, look what we found up in this tree. It's a koala bear. Now, it's it's not exactly the best view, but it's really still quite a beaut to see this wild creature. Oh, geez, it's a long ways down. I kind of want to get a better look at this creature without uh, seeing its uh, underside, if you know what I'm saying. So can I just, can I just, oh. No animals were hurt in the making of this. Let's continue our search for the alligator though. I've got my driver taking us down to the river, right? We're hoping we'll have a better chance of finding that out. Oh. 
hope we'll have a better chance of finding an alligator down here. Let's hope there's some good luck. Oh, crikey. Oh, bloody. <laughs> oh, oh, St. Frickless, that was a close. Oh, what? Oh, my goodness. Oh, what an adventure. Oh, man, it's so weird. My driver, he started sniffing this, like, white stuff, right? I have no idea what... Whoa! Oh, my goodness. Bloody crap. Oh. So let's hop out. Are you... Are you okay, camera guy? You got hit by a lot of... Please. No. Are you... Are you even alive? <laughs> the hospital. He's fine. He's fine. Oh. He's an intern. We don't even oh. have to pay him. Oh. Now look at this. It's an owl. Remember that song from earlier? You gotta do the owl. Sorry, blokes. I've been looking through these woods all day, and I haven't seen a single sight of a big old alligator. This is just as disappointing to me as I'm sure it is to y'all. I came out here looking for one of those beautiful creatures, and I haven't even found one. Oh my gosh! Bloody look at it! There's a full-on alligator right there! I'm going to get him! Oh my gosh, you alligator! Where'd he go? Where'd he go? At least he wouldn't tell me where- Oh, there he bloody is! Oh, look at this guy, look at him thrashing around! Oh, we're going under- Look at this bloody creature! Look at him! Look at the size of this thing! This is a magnificent He's a fighter, isn't he? Oh, it's beautiful! Oh. Lovely. I think I finally tired of it. See, the next step when alligators begin to get tired is they begin to death roll. Now, this is a very dangerous thing. But luckily, luckily I've been working with alligators for years, so they can't pull one over on me. Bloody monster, he got water up my nose. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I have a query. Stingrays don't live in rivers, do they? No, sir. You're fine. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank you. I lost my grip. Where is he? I got it. Okay, I got his tail. And I got him by his neck. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. You guys are helping. You guys are helping. Wait a minute. No. The real Steve Irwin wouldn't run away. He would face the gator head on. Uh, yeah, come and face me, you bloody bloke. Uh. Look, he's trying to get away now, eh? Come on, back here. I got you, bloody creature. I got you. You're not escaping me, son. Oh, he's death rolling. Oh, he's bloody death rolling. Oh. Are you tired? Are you tired? I'm kind of tired. Hey, you know what? Let's just say that we call this. Let's just say that we call this whole thing off. Oh, just... <laughs> Come on, creature. Come on. Creature. Get back in the water. He's thrashing. He's thrashing. He's quite strong. He's trying to drown me. I'm gonna need some help. Come on. Camera guy, please do something. Sheesh. Seriously, you bloody. Oh, 
Creature. Thank you guys for following me on this wild adventure. Crikey, it's been a lot of fun. I've now accomplished what I've always wanted to do. And I've caught a bloody alligator. But now it's time to let him go. I've accomplished what I need to do. This is the end. Goodbye, old friend. I hope we meet again soon. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey with me. It's been quite a transcendent experience. I've completed what my child self always wanted to do. And I've made it out here. I've wrestled an alligator. I've took a look at the wildlife. And it's beautiful. And I wouldn't change a thing. Anyways, I gotta go home and throw some shrimp on the barbie. Just kidding, Australians don't actually do that. It's actually really mean that everyone just assumes that that's all we Australians do, but it's fine. I just I thought it worked as a metaphor, it's fine. Thank you guys for coming along this adventure with me. It really means the world to me. And it's time to head back inside. But now in the video, it is time for me to say some things that may come across cringy, but I promise they're being said from a really heartfelt place. So I was born in the early 2000s, and Steve Irwin died on September 4th, 2006. That's right, the day this video will be released is the anniversary of his tragic death. But see, I grew up being a massive Steve Irwin fan in the early 2000s. I became Steve Irwin's biggest fan, and then just a few months later, watched him die. That was really devastating to me as a kid, and my prayers go out to his family. But this man that I decided was my hero was stolen from me way before his time. But even after his death, he never really stopped inspiring me. As a kid, I would still go around and catch lizards and lie to my friends about catching things that weren't lizards. I used to brag a lot about catching snakes. I. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> this man gave me my love of animals. He's the reason in all of my diary videos, I said I wanted to become either a zookeeper or an animal catcher. That was him inspiring me. I wanted to be just like him. That's probably also why I made those skits. This man inspired me. He was someone that I looked up to. And even though he'll never know it, he shaped my entire childhood. And even though he is long gone, I... Won't ever forget him. And I just want this entire video to be one big love letter to Steve Irwin and just showing how much he means 
to me even still after I've grown up. I obviously still think about him a lot. I mean, have you guys seen how many times he's been mentioned on this channel? Number four, I will be an animal catcher. I would guess that I meant, like, because, like, as a kid, I always wanted to uh, be an animal catcher as in, like, Steve Irwin, you know, because if you don't know, Steve Irwin's my hero. So, you know, I guess, I guess my life is actually pretty normal. Anyways, let's go over to my Steve Irwin shrine. You didn't. He didn't build my childhood. Steve Irwin did that. <laughs> no, he built Carter's childhood. Not me, of course. And I'm not Carter. So, Steve, I know we'll never meet, but I just had to put it out there that you changed my entire childhood and you helped create some of my favorite memories from my childhood that I still hold on to so dearly. And I can assure you, I definitely would have directed the sequel to Collision Course if you'd ever given me the chance. <laughs> Thank you for everything you did for me, Steve Irwin. You created some of my favorite memories of just being a kid. And I won't forget them. And I won't forget you. And even though, unfortunately, I'll never actually get to meet you, I still got to have a lot of memories with you. And if there's one thing I want to say to wrap up this video is just, man, you meant a lot to me, Steve. And, um, I'll see you later, alligator. <laughs>